In today's episode, we test out Luke's handiwork in sealing the hatches as we sit through a storm. We inspect the anchor chain, update some of the running rigging, and explore some caves in one of Ibiza's prettiest bays. Hi, I'm Lore. And this is Luke. After years of the city life, we decided to take the path less traveled and live upon the waves. So we did it. We bought a tiny floating home, Talia. Join us as we discover the Med, push our limits and learn how to sail in the process. That's right, we're only just getting started. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow us as we transition to life on the sea. Hey guys, so we're here in Ibiza in the marina of San Antony. We're sitting it out for a couple of days here to avoid this storm that's passing over now. Today's a big test because we testing the work that I did to seal off all the leaky hatches in the salon here. And so far, so good. No drips in the seals around the hatches, which I've patched up with Seekerflex from the outside here underneath the mast. We've got no drips coming in there. So we had an inundation really from in here the last time around. But if we take a close look, we can see a bit of dodgy seeker flex on the underside of the deck and a bit of nice seeker flex on the top side. Seems to have done the job quite well. It is such a vindicating feeling when the work that you've done actually proves to work especially when it's got to do with your own comfort. And that's such a great feeling. We're now in this pretty decent storm. It could rain all night right now and not a drip would come inside. We didn't come into this lifestyle expecting for it to be like life on land. We knew that there would be difficulties and discomforts and hard work, much harder work than we're, we're used to on land. And that's been the case, but that said, at the same time, you don't want to be sitting in a leaky boat. You want to be able to relax comfortably as a storm passes overhead inside. Yeah, that's thunder. I'm going to switch off the camera now, and uh, I've already put the phones in the, in the oven to act as a Faraday cage, so yeah, I just don't really want to take any risks right now. Hi everyone, so it's been... A day we are now here in St. Anthony in Ibiza. Yesterday it was really not a good weather, it rained a lot and so we didn't do that much. But today was more productive I would say. So today we've had a mechanic out to just have a, a look over the engine. That's something that I haven't really done yet since we've been on board and I feel a little bit guilty especially after making such a big trip from Javier to here on Ibiza, mostly under engine. Fortunately, always looking pretty good with the exception of the coolant needing a bit of a top up. Also, he managed to unseize where the uh, transmission oil goes in. So now that's accessible. Uh, it puts my mind at ease. We also had a local rigger out who was able to uh, take a look at our reefing lines, especially the second reefing line, which is way too short. It doesn't even come <laughs> up to the jammer when the sail is down. So um, yeah, we're going to get both reefing lines replaced and I've also, what? Mask. So the rigger is going to uh, give us two new reefing lines and also replace the main sheet with a good bit of Dyneema, which I'm quite excited about. So with that, I think it's going to put our mind at ease a lot more in terms of the uh, running rigging. And now we are on our way to have a little treat. And then we have a couple of... Uh, errands to do such as a heater and some tags because we'd really like to mark the anchor chain
one. I'm walking on the pastoral and I just want to be sure I'm not gonna fall in the water. Anyway, today is day three, I think, in San Antonio. We are more active and we decided to measure the anchor chain. It took us quite a while just to put it on the dock from the bow of the boat to the dock. Why we're doing all of this? A couple of reasons. Number one, to verify that the chain is actually the length that we were sold, which it is. It's just over 50 meters. And number two is to make sure we mark the chain appropriately to let us know the length that we're letting out. And so now we bought these little things that we will put between the links. All right, let's do that. Voila, we are almost done with labeling the chain. So we have different colors, red 10, green 30. Yellow 20, blue 40. It looks pretty nice, it's quite visible, so um, I'm quite happy that we, we just did it because um, it was a bit of a nightmare when we had to drop the anchor in the water and not knowing exactly what was the length of, of the chain. So it's important to know the length of chain that you're dropping because depending on the weather conditions, you need to let out between three and five times the depth of water that you're in in order to get good holding in the sand or rock or seaweed or whatever you're on. So for example, if we're anchoring in five meters of depth, we have to let out 15 meters of chain as a minimum. Now, if the weather is looking nasty, then we would let out five times the depth that we're in. The Beneteau 373 is notorious for its healing when gusts pick up. That's one of the reasons it's important to reef early. The reefing lines on board Talia were far from satisfactory, so the guys from Rigging Mar helped us install two new ones, a Dyneema main sheet, and a couple of cam cleats on the mast. Good morning everyone! So this is the last day in the Sant in Tony, we've decided that it was time to move and go a bit north. So we decided to go at an anchorage that is not far away from here, just for one night. And then we plan to go north to a beautiful Cala, Portinax. We'll stay there probably for two nights and then we'll cross to Mallorca. Yeah, so today is the last day, which means that uh, we still have a couple of stuff to do before leaving, like grocery shopping. We also need to find a uh, coffee place because we'd like to upload our YouTube episode since it's Thursday actually. So that's the day, yay! Now Luke is doing laundry behind me. We also have to pump up the dinghy. Uh, fill up the tanks and I think we will be good to leave. Yesterday uh, there is a rigger who came and he installed some new reefing lines and I must say I'm not a professional I'm not an expert or whatever but I must say that when I hosted the main sale earlier I felt a difference what do you think I have no idea you did all the hard work <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I think there's a difference so um, let's see how it goes but uh, Definitely, you can tell that the lines are, you know, newer. And before going to the Cala for the night, we are practicing a bit because it's been three days we haven't sailed and I think it was time. Um, there's not a lot of traffic outside, so it's quite nice. The wind is quite good as well. And it's a nice little sail, I like it. We're in between 10 and 15 knots of wind, 
and we're traveling at five and a half knots so I'm pretty satisfied with that. Uh, the boat is healing quite a bit. We may want to uh, even try the new reefing lines. Could be worth putting the first reef in. Let's do it. For those less familiar with the anatomy of a sailboat, reefing is the process of reducing the exposed sail size in order to keep the boat under control in stronger winds. We have two lines to reef the mainsail and can furl or roll up the headsail to any size we like. Once our test of the new lines was done, we found our anchorage for the night. Anchoring makes me way too anxious. Already it's a new experience for us, and then on top of that we've got somewhat busy anchorages. Mm -hmm. Then next to that we've got the Posidonia police, so the police in Spain who making sure that you're not dropping anchor on on seaweed, mm -hmm. this seaweed that's called Posidonia. And so just finding the patch of sand where you can drop the anchor is already nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially here it's the first anchorage where you have just small patches of sand. Yeah, the other two anchorages we've been to have been wide open spaces right. of sand. Yeah. So truth be told they've been busier so with more boats here there's only what one two three four five six including us but still with all the seaweed it makes it very difficult to find the right spot mm -hmm. while the anchoring may not always be easy Ibiza never fails to impress with the most incredible sunsets and sunrises. Here in San Antony is no exception. Whether you're watching the sunset from the world famous Café del Mar or from the bow of your sailboat, as long as your mojito is nicely chilled, I can guarantee you're gonna have a good time. If all this talk of sunsets and mojitos has you thirsting for more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll share my world famous mojito recipe in an upcoming episode. this model but the problem we had yesterday was that it's small with a lot of seaweeds and it wasn't easy to drop the anchor in a patch of sand anyway the night was a bit rough as well because n not a lot of wind and so the sea was quite calm but still with some swell and uh, Luke didn't sleep well uh, it was better for me that way we are happy to leave <laughs> And we are going to go north, approximately three hours of sailing. Um, so let's see, there's not a lot of wind, but that's how it is, it's okay. So after a productive stay in San Antony in Ibiza, we are heading out today, despite there being very little wind, heading out to the north of the island to a small bay called Zaraka. Even though there's no wind, we're leaving today on a Friday because we want to get there before the weekend traffic arrives so we can get a nice spot. We'll sit out the weekend until we wait for the wind to be in our favor to make the jump to Mallorca. So 
since we're planning to stay here for a couple of days, I want to dive in and check on the anchor to see if everything is well set. Ooh, it's cool. Ooh, it's cool. <laughs> now go find the anchor. I think she's swimming back to mainland Spain. Right here. How does it look? Super good. It's paradise down there. Today we go exploring. She's ready. <laughs> and we're off. Well, I made a pretty good breakfast, didn't I? Looks good, we haven't tasted it yet. Well, after the night we had, we deserve it, right? Yeah, it was a pretty crazy night. Yesterday evening, probably around seven or eight, about seven o'clock in the evening, we set out a stern mm. anchor that was designed to keep our bow in the swell. As the northerly wind picked up, what happened was northerly wind never picked up and the southerly actually picked up. So we ended up having the bow of the boat being pushed. If this is the southerly wind, both the stern anchor is holding us and the main anchor is holding us and the beam of the boat was head on to the wind and it was also head on to the swell from the other direction. So it was extremely rolly and at about midnight we just couldn't handle it anymore and we said okay we need to find a solution. I'd let the stern anchor road out as much as possible. That didn't do the trick. We needed to let go of it altogether. We discussed the idea of cutting the line all together and then it reminded me we have an anchor buoy and so the decision was made rather than cutting the line off the stern altogether, tying the line that connects the stern anchor to the anchor buoy and just letting it go free. This morning we have to take it back. Yeah. So off I go. So long. Farewell. <laughs> So as you can see, the stern anchor is, where's the boy? Just over there. I got one. Ah. So, Luke got the anchor, the stern anchor that we struggled yesterday to get, to get back. There she is. Was it difficult? Uh, not once I managed to shake it out of the sand. It's quite easy. Mm, good.
For us, Kaluzaraka is the epitome of a hidden island paradise. We shared this huge bay with only one other boat. Given its distance from the main marinas on the island, the north of Ibiza boasts the most beautiful secluded bays. The water is crystal clear, the rocky coastline abounds with hidden caves, some empty and some with bohemian flower children on their quest towards Nirvana. We absolutely loved it here, and we wish we could have stayed longer, but the journey continues and we have more islands to visit.